Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So today I want to do something a little bit different. Um, we are going to talk about decks that have keywords or key phrases on them in the RWS fashion. So this is today's video. Welcome to Tarot Nat Plans. If you haven't been here before, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you are a longtime subscriber, we are slowly approaching our two-year anniversary. I think it's like in two months. So I'm super excited. And I want to try out some new stuff on the channel. So going forward, I'm going to be starting a couple of series. Um, I'm just working out the details. But yeah, for today though, we are going to go over some uh, keyword decks. Because I still feel like a beginner, even though I'm getting much better at my RWS. I still feel like a beginner. So I figured I would share some of the decks that I think are really fun beginner decks. And not even all beginner decks. I feel like there's one or two that aren't really that much of a beginner. They're definitely more of an intermediary. And I'm working my way towards them. But at least they have keywords. So we have some indie and some mass market. So let's not waste any more time and get right into these. So... My first one is really one of my favorite decks of all time. And I finally found the perfect fabric. I had a fabric before that I made for it. But then I came across this and fell in love. And then if anyone can guess, y'all should know that it is my Destiny deck, The Art of Tarot by Lisa Santine. And I do have the newer Matching Oracle. And I absolutely love this bag match i think it's really really perfect and i made the oracle with the same bag i got a plenty of the material because i was in love but enough about my love of this deck for the fact that i just love it and i use it for love readings but also just study sometimes i use it for other things too but that's primarily what i use it for is like not just like bleep boy readings but like actual romantic love readings or if you're really trying to figure something out but more of in a positive light i guess um here we go so it is beautifully edged and this nice matte gold but with shimmer and these are the beautiful beautiful backs this is definitely a pip style deck but i love the keywords on it i feel like the font is really clear we do have roman numerals um, but there are keywords. So that's one of the reasons why I was so amazed when I saw this stack is it's beautiful with all the gold and the like magentas and pink and purple. It's definitely my aesthetic when it comes to a pip deck, but I was definitely drawn to the keywords. So let's flip through a few of the cards. Um, there's usually, I think two keywords per card. And it's through the majors and minors. As you can see here, we have like the eight of swords. So there's definitely eight swords. So if you're working on getting away from the traditional RWS imagery and going more pipsa, which is something that I'm working towards actually right now, I have a secret, but I'm not going to tell you yet. I do have a study coming up that I'm waiting to start. I'm hoping next month. Um, but yeah. I love this deck. I think the imagery is beautiful. I think it's delicate and pretty. And I just, I love this deck so much. And it's rose petal, which I know is not really everybody's thing. But it's definitely my thing. I just, and I, I used to have this deck out all the time. And I put it away for a while and kind of only brought it out more during love readings. I really do need to pull it out more. It's just beautiful. And I do love the keywords. And I just love the imagery. Like you can tell, there's not a lot, but it's very delicate and there's just enough. So I think when I get better at numerology-based readings, I, I will find it even easier to read with this deck. But yeah, I think it's absolutely beautiful. And that is the Destiny deck, The Art of Tarot by Lisa Santine. And I absolutely just like, and I always remember who she is. I don't know why. <gasps> we have some backwards cards, guys. It's not a cool thing. I don't do reversals. So they're really easy to find in this deck when they do that, though, because it's like deep, it's like brighter at one end versus the other. So it's not really reversible. Like, not for me. 
And I do have the big, beautiful hardbound um, book that goes with it. So, yeah. Absolutely love this deck. So, we have a couple of indies and a couple of mass market. Actually, only two are mass market out of the seven. The other five are all indie. We have Lucid Dreams Beginner Tarot with keywords. So this is actually a divided bag that I made for this deck. I just thought this material was beautiful. I thought it matched really well. And then I can keep the book separate from the cards. I'm slowly working on getting better at making divided bags. So again, beautiful matte, but like sparkly gilding. This is probably my favorite edging type. Like I love plain matte too of color, but I also love it with a little bit of glitter. The backs are super simple and pretty and they are reversible. And these cards are reversible. So like I said, it's Lucid Dreams Beginner Deck with keywords is actually in the title by Saint Soleil. So this is really pretty because it's very RWS based, um, but it's definitely got a more, also delicate too, but it's got a, a little bit different imagery. It's like, I don't even know, is it like photography and collage? Like the faces look so real, like look at the detail on that, like I can't even tell. But it's really cool. I like that there's lots of keywords on this. I love that there's astrological symbols and other ones I probably don't even know what they are. I like that there's um, upright and reversals. And that there's several keywords. Like, for example, um, Three of Cups. We have Celebration, Friendship, Collaboration, Community, Circle of Support, Social Events, Creativity, Your Place of Shared Joy. But then if we go reversal, which I like that it's actually a reversal, so you can read it in a spread if you want to do reversals. I'm just not there yet. But you get independence, third-party situations, scandal, gossip, over-partying, no support, solitude, being forced to conform, and lack of time for others. The cardstock is really nice on this one, too. It's a really durable-feeling linen. It's just a really pretty deck. I don't know. Yeah, the other the um, Destiny deck was Rose Petal. But I definitely feel like this is like long lasting with it being linen. And I don't feel like it's overly far away from the RWS imagery. I definitely think it is a little bit different. And in certain ways it goes its own way. But it's still somewhat traditional. Like you still have your two swords with your swords. And she's blindfolded and she's by the water. Here you have your high priestess with the two pillars. You still have the moon and the scroll. And you have letters. There's not so much um, color definition here, but to I mean, so it's similar, but a little bit more different. Like, look at this. Like, to me, that looks like photography, but it's really cool. There's even like, if you can notice that, the gold detail even in the image and the borders. And the way this is produced. I guess if you really wanted to, after studying it hard, you could trim it. Like, I wouldn't personally. I feel like this is a little more on the pricey side. Not, like, crazy expensive, but it's on the pricier side, and I wouldn't want to mess with it. But that's just me. So that's Lucid Dreams. And I just, you know, there's different ethnicities, different sizes. So it's a really good, diverse deck as well. But it's got great keywords, and that's our number one topic for today's video. So, I definitely am liking this deck for study and use. And it does come with a really good compact guidebook. And there's, like, it's cool because you have, like, your page of stuff here, but then you have room for my notes, which I think is really cool. So, it's not, like, a crazy amount of information, but it's a solid amount, and it comes with the deck. It's not an add-on. So, yeah, I really am enjoying that one. Next up is another indie. I guess we'll just keep my two mass markets are together, so we'll just keep those for the end, I guess. 
No, I'll be honest, I don't use this deck a ton, but I do love it for like late summer, early fall. And this is the five cent tarot. Um, and this is the second edition, it says on the box, by Madame Clara on Etsy, I believe is what it goes by. So it does come with a little guidebook with some images. Like I said, I haven't read with this deck a ton, so I didn't even remember what the guidebook looked like, but it's decent. The cool thing about this deck is, at least when I got it, um, I got it on Etsy. Yeah, I believe I got it on Etsy, but it did have a Kickstarter. And there was, like, I think, like, three to five choices in colors, which I thought was really cool. So you could pick the edging, and the back was, like, and I think there was, like, blue, green, per lavender, purple color. There was a couple of different colors, which I thought was really fun. And because I love purple, of course, I picked purple. Um, and I do have their um, Two Penny Oracle, I think it's what it's called. And it as well is in the lavender. And look, I haven't used this deck a ton. There is a little bit of wear on the edges, as I'm noticing. But I do, again, this is like the sparkly matte edging that I love. And like, look at that. It's just so pretty. And it's on great linen cardstock as well. So this is fun. It's a little bit different. Oh, if I can turn the deck the right way okay so here we go so to me this reminds me of like fair time or like the carnival which is why i tend to use it at um the like late august beginning of september because that's when our local fairs are around my location um yeah it's really cool i love the like dark imagery with like the splashes of color in between so the imagery is really cool, but I do like as well that it has keywords, but this is cool because they're kind of in, I guess it depends, like, there's keywords that are more, like, very obvious that they're on the cards, and then there's ones that they try to build more into the imagery. So, like, in this one, they're, like, I feel like this is kind of, like, in between, like, it's not totally in, like, in the imagery. You can still see it, but it's still kind of in the imagery. But then you have like a base keyword, which I thought was kind of cool. So like um, here for the emperor, you have authority, power, patient for the emperor. And then if you turn it upside down, you have control, domination, and rigidity. So again, you've got lots of keywords, but I think it's kind of cool that you have a dominant keyword. I think this is the only deck that has like a dominant keyword of the ones that I have. But I just, I think the imagery is kind of cool. I, this would this is a great fall deck or like a winter deck. I guess it just depends on when you feel like using it. So matches, I believe, are wands. Buttons, I believe, are pentacles. So that is a little bit on the harder side. Um, needles would be swords. And then cups are still cups. So they did change a few things. Like, oh, I love when they use an owl for high priestess. It's great. just a beautiful deck why is this card upside down and there's i think there's a few extra cards in this deck if i'm not mistaken but yeah so that's the five cent tarot and great card stock um it is a beautiful linen and it's Indian, I believe it's from Etsy, under Madame, ooh, if I can get it back in the box, from Madame Clara. And they do have several other decks, and they've done a few Kickstarters, so they're definitely like a trustworthy indie company, if you're concerned about that. Like all of these decks I've had good experiences with. So this is one that is brand new to my collection. Literally got it in this week, and I haven't bred with it yet. I was waiting to film a walkthrough of some sort, which I still need to do. But in the meantime, we're going to take a look at it. So this is the Tarot of the Toiling Hands. I keep saying Toiling Hands Tarot, but it's the Tarot of the Toiling Hands. I saw this, I don't even know where, on a random YouTube video, and fell in life, fell in love. Fell in life, fell in love. It has kind of a cool, like, pamphlet 
cheat sheet. And the creator was really cool. It's from Etsy. And she has some, like, damaged, damaged boxes. So I got it, like, significantly cheaper than the brand new one. And honestly, I didn't see any damages whatsoever. So, yeah, the writing's a bit tiny, but... I think it's still pretty cool. It's a little flip out. If I can fold it properly. <laughs> and then you get this little pamphlet as well. Oh, it does talk about reversals a little bit. It came in that tuck box. But it's one of those nice tuck boxes. So it has like the opening there. So it's one of the nice ones. This is white backs. This is a black and white deck. And the only other black and white deck that I have that's like a little bit of color is I believe the Skeleton Tarot. Because I do have another deck. Um, and I forget what it's called, but it's in my um, purgatory box. So yeah, beautiful reversible backs. Nice white edging. And like, I don't feel the need to edge this at all. It's beautiful the way it is. And so I fell in love with the fact that it has like a key sentence on every card. I love the like um, tattoo style art. This is from the UK. It is more of like cardboardy cardstock. I heard someone else that had it say it was similar to Oak, Ash, and Thorn a little bit, but also. Um, tattoo tarot maybe a little bit i don't know it's it's definitely like a firm cardstock but yeah so this is the deck so like for full example the child of the great and unknown journey so for the fool i think it's a nice cardstock for the for the fact that it is black and white i like the lines are nice and clear you can see what they are I am going to do a full walkthrough somewhere on social media of this deck. I've actually been playing around with TikTok and doing some walk, quick walkthroughs there, which has been really fun for me. So if you're interested in little quick, like, you know, the one minute or two minute flip throughs, let me know if there's anything that you would love to see a full flip through of that on there. Um, it's just been fun to do it, but y'all know I'm on TikTok and Instagram mostly, an occasional Facebook group, and occasional Twitter, but mostly Instagram here and TikTok. So, like, here for the Hermit, the, God, the Pilgrim of Marvelous Introspection. I love, and I love all the skulls. Oh, it's so good. And it is Roman numerals on the cards that are down here on the bottom. Oh, justice, the mother of fair and just law. So we can get to some minor. Oh, eight of cups. The child of escape and the master of the missing. Oh, wow. Like you're winning the tears in the moon's eyes. That's a really pretty card. Like I even have, I haven't even done a full flip through personally yet with this deck. But so far, I'm really liking it of what I've seen of it. And I definitely love the intriguing art style. The keywords seem to be really good. It doesn't seem to have like one era. And like some stuff is different. Like look at this page of pentacles. It's like opening up her head. The child, uh, the child of burgeoning, burgeoning, bur wow guys, can I talk? The child of burgeoning, bugging, wow, burgeoning awareness of the material. Because apparently I can't talk on a Sunday morning. <laughs> really, really pretty. So yeah, that's the tarot of the toiling hands. Actually, I want to see if we can find it. Oh. I want to see the Three of Swords. One of my favorite cards, as we know. The Lord of a Abject Misery. Hmm. So, yeah. 
that is the tarot of the toiling hands i'm just gonna keep saying it and hopefully that'll help me memorize the title of this deck because i keep wanting to call it the other way and that's not what its name is You ever have a deck that you, like, cannot remember the name or you say it wrong all the time, no matter what you do? You just, like, can't wrap your hand or head around the proper naming of a deck? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So, so far, all the bags that I've showed, other than 5 Cent Tarot, because that came with the deck, obviously, I've made. This one is a Peggy bag. And it is the Brady Tarot. So this is the deck that I was saying is it a little bit more intermediary, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. It's funny. Lisa always calls this her National Geographic deck, which I totally agree with that. So this is the second edition, I believe. So it's the ones that don't have the big borders. And it has a really good guidebook. Lots of information. I always get confused of the suits because they're renamed. So that's part of the reason that I always get confused. As well, it's an animal deck. Again, it's got that beautiful matte glittery edging that I love. It's got rose petal cards. Beautiful, beautiful backs. And it doesn't have the big white borders like it did on the first edition. So the way this brady tarot works i always get confused and that's why i feel like i'm waiting to i like a moment of clarity where like i can use this deck and it's gonna just like hit me because i love it it's beautiful and i want to use it i just feel like i always get confused with it but it does have keywords it does change the names which is annoying but it is what it is so in your majors they are what they are so you can see love the lovers love the lovers the sun but then you get here like five of arrows and then you get the keyword defeat so it's in the minors that you get keywords but not the court cards so just in the numbered minors so four feathers optimism so i assume that's like four of wands. um yeah four of wands so, Ten of Feathers, I want to say is Ten of Swords, but I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I haven't worked with this deck a lot, so I'm not perfectly knowing of all the suits. But it's a beautiful deck. Each um, suit does have a different color in the borders. So, I feel like this is just one of those decks that I would have to study in order to use. I think that's just the one downfall. Is this isn't like, yes, I could pull out the guidebook for every card meeting. Um, so, guilty, scarcity. But it's not like, I don't want to have to pull out the guidebook. And especially if there's keywords on it, I'm like, I shouldn't have to pull out the guidebook. But because they renamed them, renamed the suits, I have to. So I don't know. It's just a maybe it's just a me thing. Like I can't remember if this is one of the decks. No, it's not. So some of the decks that actually that I really like and I want to use, um, what I do is when they've renamed suits, I actually just stick like a little sticky note in the guidebook or in the box of the deck, wherever, with what they are and what they relate to so like say i don't know but if they arrows or feathers or swords i would just like write feathers and then like equal sign swords and put on a sticky note in the deck or in the guidebook so that i know so like to me this is obviously six of cups but yeah that is the brady tarot second edition and, you know, it's a beautiful rose petal finish, which I do really enjoy. It's got a really nice box. So it definitely would make a very pretty display deck if you were one of those people that, like, displayed your decks on a shelf. I have, like, a shelf that I put specific decks on, but most of my decks are in bags. So I don't do this, but it does have a beautiful box if you were into that. 
So now the last two decks. So that was five indie decks. And now we have two mass market decks. So let's get into those. We have the Wandering Star Tarot. I always forget the name of this deck. I don't even say it wrong. I just always forget the name of it. Um, I believe this was Indie and then it went mass market. So I like that you have the card name, a few keywords, and a write-up. And then a quote. And you get that even in the minors. So there's no pictures, but it's a good little guidebook. And this is a Hay House deck, I believe. Super pretty backs. I love the like, um, like it looks like they colored it with pencil crayon. I think that's pretty. I love watercolor decks too. So this is definitely up my alley. What I did was I picked a few of the colors from the backs here and edged it multicolored. And I think it, think it turned out great. So this is one of those decks. So it's a regular Hay House cardstock as well, in case you were wondering. Um... So one of the things I like about this deck is that the keywords are hidden inside the imagery. Like I was saying with the Five Cent Tarot, they're just kind of in the imagery, but not like subtly in the imagery. This is a lot more subtly in the imagery. So like here you have Page of Pentacles and you have Talent, Skill, Money, Talent, Skill, Money, Talent, Skill. So it's almost like a mantra, but it's like hidden inside the artwork which I think is really pretty. I love all the colors in this deck. It's just really cool. So yeah, Ten of Swords, for example. Ending, final, closure, and then it repeats itself. Four Cups, Yearning, Disillusion, Boredom. And the keywords are very on point. And there's even a few animal cards. Change, shift, and change. So for the Eight of Cups. It's a very, very cute deck. And it's really fun to use, actually. Like, I feel like this is one of those decks that I could actually use for, like, any type of reading. Male, female. You know, it's not like... I don't feel like it's love-driven or or practically driven like i feel like i could use this deck for anything it's very pretty so yeah that is the wandering star arrow and that's by uh cat pierce and i have it in a bag by a moonlit fay and I think it's a pretty good match, if I do say so myself, with the eyes and the eyes. But I think, actually, when I purchased this bag, that's how she had it set up. So, that's how that worked out for me. And for our last and final deck, I'm sad to say this deck has made it to my purgatory box. This is a Field Tarot by Hannah Elizabeth Fofana. This was an indie deck that went mass market a while back. I didn't know that it was indie when I bought it mass market. And she came out with a matching indie uh, animal oracle that was on Kickstarter last year. That was absolutely beautiful, done in the same style. Was made to perfectly match this deck. And I really wanted it, but I have enough animal oracles, I feel like, at this point. And I wanted it to match this deck. And in her Kickstarter, she said that it was going mass market to Hay House like her tarot did. And so I've been kind of waiting for that to happen. And there still is no word on it. So I don't know what's happening with that. It's regular Hay House cardstock. Um, I love this deck. And when I bought this deck, it's funny because... I couldn't decide between this and Star Seeker. So, no, I did know that it was indie at one point, but I couldn't get it indie anymore because I had a wet mass market. And to me, the image style and this and star, the Star Seeker, which is an indie deck, were similar. I'm not saying they were the same, but they were similar. And then I felt there was a lot of, like, pinks and purples and blue. Definitely my aesthetic. A little bit watercolor looking. And so I couldn't decide. 
But then when I looked at the price and I found out that this one was mass market and this one had keywords, I was like, that's fine. I'm going to go with the field tarot, which I do love it. It's beautiful. Like these are some of my favorite cards. So the majors don't have keywords and they are Roman numerals. I love this death card with the flowers. It's so pretty. I know it's like digital art. I just love all the colored hair and all the pretty floral tattoos on the women. Drew me in immediately. So then you have in your minors, you have your keywords. So we have two of swords is decisions. Um, Ace of discs, Ace of pentacles, wealth. So I love this imagery. And like every time I pull it out and I see all these florals and the pretty hair color, I just want to use it. But when I read with it, I personally don't get a lot from it. And so I felt like I also just wanted the Animal Oracle to go with this deck. But I haven't really used this deck a ton. Like, I don't know, maybe 10 times. And so I'm kind of like, am I keeping this so I can get the Animal deck? Or am I getting the Animal deck so I can keep this deck? And then I just realized I really wanted Star Seeker all along. I just bought this because it was a cheaper option at the time. So I've decided I'm going to declutter this deck. So if anyone's interested, let me know. It's a beautiful deck. I absolutely recommend it. The keywords on it are really good. I love that there's animals and people. Some of the cards are a little bit pippish here, like you can see. Um, like Two of Wands is planning, but you still get that imagery. Like I love the hair and the tattoos. Like I can't get over it. It's so pretty. But I just never read with it. And so I did recently get Star Seeker like last week. And I've been obsessed. And I, like I can't put it down like at all. Like I use it every day. I like I'm already getting a bow in it because I'm using it so much. And it's rose petal. And I just I mean I, I should have just did that from the beginning is what I realized. And then I got the lavender edition of the Amio deck in English. And they are perfect matches in heaven. I realized... I realized a lot of stuff lately that I need to be more mindful when I'm buying decks and of my aesthetic and making decks more multifunctional. So even astrology decks, I can use them for the keywords. And Amio decks don't have a guidebook, but they have a couple of guide cards and all the cards have great keywords on it. So like I've even decided to recently declutter my heavenly bodies because I'm just not into the artwork. But I love the artwork and the colors on a Miodac. So I have it in English, in the lavender and the pink, and I have it in French and the English, which I just recently got for when I do some Marseille studies. I thought it would be cool to have the French version. But, like, I love the wands. I love all the, like, crystals, colored crystals on the end of the wands. Like, this is a really beautiful deck. And I feel like the nudity is done really tastefully. And the, like, single keywords are really good. And the, like, guidebook is simpler. But it's to the point, like, it works. I just realized I should have got Starseeker all along. But if you're like me and you want something with keywords and you like the idea, you like this aesthetic, I think this is a wonderful deck. I think it's a great beginner keyword deck. And it's mass market and assumably the matching oracle is going to go mass market. When? I don't know, but assumably it is. So that is it for me. That is seven total two mass markets and five indie keyword decks for the most part are beginner friendly except brady tarot i think it's definitely more intermediate that's just my thoughts on it but to each their own if you love the brady tarot and you want it and you're a beginner have at her because i did i just realized i need more time to get to that level but until then don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you around TarotTube, Instagram, and TikTok a lot more recently um, at TarotNet Plans. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. And thanks for subscribing if you've been a longtime subscriber. I really appreciate everybody. And, you know, I love doing this. And it's so much fun. And I know I've kind of laxed a little bit lately. I've kind of gotten a little funk. But I'm working on getting out of it. So I've got lots of great ideas. If you guys have anything you want to see, let me know down below and leave a comment. So until next time, bye guys.